I'm Philip Clark, Farmers Weekly's Economics and World Editor, and I've just returned from the Global Grain 2008 conference in Switzerland. Over 500 grain traders, analysts and brokers crammed into a conference hall on the shores of Lake Geneva to hear about trends in the international grain market. And the overwhelming message that came across was that better times are just around the corner. Many of the traders admitted to being surprised by the extent to which the market had collapsed following their last conference 12 months ago. Bumper harvests in the EU, USA and the Black Sea region were largely to blame. But the situation had been made a whole lot worse by the actions of speculators and hedge fund managers who had charged into commodities at the start of the year and then poured out of them as the credit crunch started to bite in the autumn. Many talked of a dash for cash as the supply of funds from the banks dried up with investors desperately selling off commodities to get some much needed liquidity onto their books. But the signs are that this has run its course and the fundamentals of supply and demand will set the tone for the grain trade in 2009. On the supply side, southern hemisphere harvests are just getting underway and are expected to deliver slightly less grain than was once forecast due mainly to drought. It's also apparent that plantings in the northern hemisphere are significantly lower this winter. For example, the area of wheat in Ukraine is believed to be 10% down. Farmers have clearly responded to the cost price squeeze as well as the difficult planting season in some areas and Chicago-based analyst AgResource reckons wheat production next year could be down 5%. But there is also concern that grain stock levels have hardly recovered at all despite the big harvest of 2008. AgResource president Dan Bass told the conference that total world stocks had grown just 11 million tonnes whereas he would have expected a 60 million tonne increase. He also believed grain stocks would drop again in 2009 by somewhere between 20 and 30 million tonnes, putting real pressure on the market. On the demand side, the general view was that the upward trend in consumption in countries like China and India would continue despite the worldwide recession. These countries are not achieving the doubled figure growth in gross domestic product that they were a year or so ago, but their economies are still expanding, as are their populations. And having tasted a Western diet, many people in these emerging economies do not want to revert to the way they used to eat and will make other sacrifices if the recession does affect them. This means increasing demand for meat and livestock products, which in turn increases demand for feed grain. Biofuels will also continue to play a part. Despite the recent downturns in crude oil prices, which is putting pressure on margins at biofuel plants, government policy will ensure continued strong demand for wheat and corn to be made into renewable fuel, both in the USA and Europe. To some extent, British farmers have already seen something of the predicted upturn in grain prices, with ex-farm feed wheat values back to £87 per tonne spot, and May futures quoted at over £100 a tonne, though this has been more to do with the recent collapse of sterling than anything else. The general view in Geneva, however, was that the grain trade would soon return to its previous bull run. Grain prices would start to firm up in the new year once traders stopped worrying about the bumper harvest of 2008 and started focusing on the market fundamentals for 2009. After the problems British cereal growers have faced this year with collapsing grain prices and escalating fertiliser bills, the upturn cannot come soon enough. <laughs>